So I was just randomly searching RoboCop 1987, as you can see, because the 30th anniversary is coming up pretty soon. And actually, it are, yeah, it's coming up on Monday on the 17th. And I was thinking, like, is there anything that's kind of, you know, interesting about it? And, you know, in terms of the Google search. And then I scroll down and I'm looking at these reviews. Uh, you know, Clark Colas from Empire. So on it, but perfectly realized the depiction of, of a mayhem-fueled near future. And then I saw this. Robocop could have been a great sci-fi movie for preteens. I'm like, the hell? What the fuck? <laughs> what is this? And then I'm looking, okay, it's critic reviews. This is the second one that shows up by Teresa Tallarico. I'm like, who is this? What is this website? I clicked on this site, and what you're seeing here, folks, Common Sense Media is one of the most insane websites I've come across lately. This is a website that is specifically tailored for special snowflakes who want a safe space for movies. It's unbelievable that this shit exists. This actually is a real thing. This isn't a satire of, of social justice warriors and their mentality. It's not a satire of how bad politically correctness has gotten. This is the real thing. These are the same people who probably are okay with films being edited and shown uh, on on planes. Because think of the children. Think of the children. What will the children do if they see a movie that that isn't completely pure and innocent? What will the children do? What will they think? This is this is unreal. This is the kind of shit that Robocop would make fun of. <laughs> that would satirize. I still can't believe my eyes. I can't believe what the fuck I'm looking at. Device free dinner. What does this what does this have to do with anything? Is this some for parents who go on this website and are all like, Oh yeah, device free dinner hashtag device free dinner. No phones at the table. You shouldn't have fucking phones at the table anyway. There shouldn't have to be a hashtag thing for people to not have their phones or their tablets out while they're eating dinner. That's just bad parenting if you have to have a fucking hashtag thing to get people to have a device-free dinner. Challenge your family because dinner is for laughing, not for texting. But look at this. Dinner is for laughing, not for texting. Lilo en Espanol. Challenge your family. Why is your family having that hard of a problem eating dinner without fucking texting? That's bad parenting. Also, this website title is one of the most ironic things I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. Common Sense Media? Really? Really? And this is a website that starts out with something like this. Parents need to know that this movie is more of a bloodbath than you probably remember. No, parents don't need to know that because most parents already fucking know that because if they've seen RoboCop, they know that it's an unbelievably violent, bloody film that's full of drugs, sex, violence, and swearing, and it's not appropriate for their kids. That's common sense, <laughs> and it's so ironic to me. It's like this, this site is all about these reviews about pointing out all these fucking things that parents need to know about these films. And they should already know this. It should already be common fucking sense to them. And there's a website called Common Sense Media. <laughs> and they're pointing out shit that should be common sense. Is that the point? Is this a satire? Is this one giant troll? If that's the case, that's actually pretty funny. But I highly doubt it. I don't think that's the case. I think they're dead fucking serious. Positive messages. It gets a zero. Really? There's no positive messages for RoboCop? What about to protect and serve? What about to uphold the law? What about the prime directives? No positive messages? Come on. There's plenty of positive messages in RoboCop. Violence. 
Damn right it gets five stars. I wouldn't expect anything less. Sex. Five stars. It's a bit much. It's a bit high of a rating. There's not that much sex in Robocop. There really isn't. There's like, this woman has her tits out, and this guy snorts some coke off of her. I think it's Morton. Other than that, there's really not a lot of sex. There's like a guy who tries to rape some chick and gets shot in the balls, but there's re it really does not deserve a five star for, for sex, or five dot rating. My bad, it's not really stars. Because they're special. They don't have stars, they have dots. Language, five stars. Yep, yep. Consumerism, three star. Why does it give it a three star rating for consumerism? It's Robocop. It's like one of the most consumerist movies ever. The villains are yuppies who run a corporation. Why does that get a three star rating? A three dot rating. My bad, I'm sorry. I'm not used to dots. Drinking, drugs, and smoking. Five stars. Five dots. Five st five dots for that. But I just hope as like parents need to know this movie is more of a bloodbath than you probably remember. I I don't I anybody who's seen this movie knows that this movie's bloody as fuck. They're not gonna show their kids this film. Unless their kids are old enough that they can tell the difference between reality and fantasy and they know it's a fact know it's a movie and it's not real life. And they're not going to go out and do any... And this is the whole thing. I'm just, I don't understand with this kind of stuff. Do you really think kids are going to watch these films? And if they see these kind of things... Oh, oh my God. There's, there's violence in this movie. Timmy's going to go grab a gun and shoot people. That is just ridiculous. That makes absolutely no sense. That's crazy talk. Oh, there's sex. Oh my god, Jimmy's gonna go get a hooker and fuck her on the side of the street. No! <laughs> That's not going to happen. Don't, at, at worst, a kid might uh, swear and you can just, you know, discipline him for that. But it's not like, they're just they're just words. They're not gonna hurt anybody. It's not like if some kid actually says the word fuck. It's not like, oh my god, somebody's gonna die. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Um... And, you know, if there's a movie that shows somebody drinking or smoking, the kid's not going to be like, oh, man, I'm going to go in and grab, buy a pack of cigarettes and smoke the whole thing and then go to the liquor store and buy a fucking six pack and get wasted. No. <laughs> this is stupid. So, OK, here we have the reviews and apparently parents have reviewed this and kids have reviewed it, too. And the kids give the film four stars. The parents give the film four stars. I just wrote this thing. It's just like. <laughs> Why is this a thing? Is this is this a thing just so I can laugh at it? So you guys can laugh at it? Excuse me. I'm just. This shit gives me indigestion. Just makes me want to puke. So anyway. I look through a lot of these uh, reviews. And I'm going to show you guys a few more. That are just like absolutely. It just shows you how fucking stupid and dumb this website is this is the worst movie review website i have ever been on why does google take this shit seriously why does this show up second on the search results for critic reviews of robocop why did, why is this even showing up in critic reviews period this doesn't deserve to be there this isn't from real critics these aren't from people who really can actually look at a film like robocop and appreciate it for what it is and actually respect the film and look at it and be like, yeah, you know, and actually appreciate it for its strengths. Because they're going to focus on, oh, my God, there's so much nudity and violence and blood. Oh, I'm offended. Then get off the Internet. <laughs> Stop making reviews. What's this fucking survey shit? Help common sense by taking five minute survey. Your feedback will help us improve your experience. I'm not taking your fucking survey. And if I did, I would answer all of the questions as negatively as humanly possible. If I could put in my own answers, it would be like, fuck your shitty website. You suck. Stop it. Get offline. <laughs> Hire some real critics. Go the fuck home. Bitches leave. But anyway, 
So let's look at this website. The, I mean, let's look at this website some more, and let's look at review by Teresa Talarico, the one that was uh, recommended to me by Google. Gets three out of five stars. Why is it not dots? RoboCop could have been a great sci-fi movie for preteens. <sighs> right off the bat, I'm face palming. What does this have to do with anything? It's not a movie for preteens. It's a movie for adults. What does that have to do with the quality of the film? Nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing. Your lie quality. I see it right here in front of my face. I'm highlighting it. It says quality. If you actually were and a good critic or wait, you got to be fucking kidding. Common Sense Media's unbiased rating. (laughs) (laughs) Unbiased rating. That is a bunch of fucking bullshit. Are conducted by... I can't even read this shit with a straight face. Expert reviewer. <laughs> oh my god. Expert reviewers. Lady, you aren't a fucking expert. I mean, <laughs> expert reviewers, both my fucking balls and my entire fucking nutsack. What a bunch of fucking balls. Bullshit. Expert reviewers. God. <laughs> so <laughs> well, let let's let's I've, I've got I got to compose myself here. Oh my god, expert reviewers. Holy shit. Um so it continues here. Its premise, after all, is fascinating. It is. A police officer is transformed into a law enforcement cyborg after being killed in the line of duty. Unfortunately, director Paul Verhoeven drenches this film in so much violence and profanity and occasional overacting that even some adults might feel squeamish. Who are these some adults? Oh, oh, they're the same people who probably write reviews for this shitty fucking website who are a bunch of fucking pussies. With sticks up the fucking asses, the fucking twats, they're fucking. It's just unbelievable. It's like, wow. It, it, it just, it's, I just. How can you not? How can you read this shit and not be like, oh my god, I feel like I'm getting dumber by each and every word I read from this fucking review from an expert reviewer. I mean. I can't even read this. I mean, I, I'm expecting this is how this person sounds. Unfortunately, director Paul Verhoeven drenches his film in so much violence and profanity and occasional overacting that even some adults might feel squeamish. Leave the reviews of badass, hardcore, ass-kicking action movies... To people like me. Not to people who are special snowflakes who will fucking melt as soon as they see some violence on the screen. Or they hear the word fuck. Oh my god, he said fuck. Weller does a good job of humanizing Robocop. Alan is tough and loyal as his partner. The scenes of Robocop's engineering are intriguing and it's fun to watch him make the bad guys squirm. Still, some of the movie feels dated and over the top. I hate I hate it when people when fucking ignorant shitty critics like this expert reviewer Teresa Talarico. I hate it when they use ter- the term dated and they use it in a derogatory way. Everything will be dated eventually. Stop using that shit. And over the top, what's wrong with being over the top? Do you hate the movie Over the Top too? Oh, wait, wait, wait. what's wrong with an action movie being over, or a sci-fi film being over the top? You know the satire elements in this are over the top for a reason because it's satire. Oh, but you didn't know they were satire elements, so you just thought it was over the top. Also, with the violence, 
it's so exaggerated that it's comical. And but because you were so fucking anal and gung ho and just boo hoo about violence, you can't even see the point that's right in front of your fucking face. So she continues, in spite of that, RoboCop remains a thought-provoking action movie that examines the use of technology and the abuse of power. Why? It doesn't even seem like she was a fan of the film at all, and it gets three out of five stars. I'm not looking for these. what these other parents' reviews are. Maybe it, I'm not really a parent, so I can't really review the film. They have, have polls. Did you review? Did our review for this title help you decide to do any of the following? Let your child watch, play, read, listen to it. Not, not let your child watch, play, slash read or listen to it. Buy, rent or download it. Did not impact my decision. That's really the main thing. Did not did not impact my decision because your site fucking sucks. So okay, we, I'm going back here. So I want to look up some other reviews for you. I saw this one earlier and this one blew my mind. But actually, let's actually look at, let's look for Robocock, shall we? Oh, I, I, I almost put in Robocock. I'm sorry. There's no movie called Robocock in, in this website. Oh, wait, there it is. There it is. Oh my God, there it is. It's Robocock. So let's look at the review for Robocock 2014. So the positive matches is two stars. Why does this have more positive messages in the first film than the than the original film? I don't understand that. Positive role models. Did the first film get in, in rating at all? And I don't think that even was a, a thing in the in the first film. I mean the original. Sorry. Oh, this site is killing my fucking brain cells. Violence. Why does that get four stars? <laughs> this gets four stars for violence. Fucking break. It, gets, it deserves one. Sex. Three stars. Well, really? Or three dots. Language. Three dots. Consumerism. Zero. Why? Why does that get zero? Drinking drugs and smoking. Three. Okay. Three dots. Let's go with the parents need to know part. Parents need to know that Robocop is a remake of the 1987 action classic. Parents don't need to know this shit. Because if they're looking up Robo Robocock, the 2014 reboot, they already know it's a remake of the 1987 film. And why are you calling it an action classic when you didn't even like it? So I don't understand that. You're calling it a classic, but you weren't really that big of a fan of it? You can't do that. You can't call something a classic and, 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 and just be like, oh, it's a classic. I didn't like it, but it's still a classic. Come on. Stick to your guns. Common sense. Have some fucking common sense, common sense, and stick to your guns. It's a remake of the 1987 action classic that's less bloody than the original, but still fairly violent, with intense frequent gun battles, thousands of bullets flying, and dead bodies, with very little blood shown. The person who writes this shit has no fucking life. Clearly. Oh my god, a kid saw a dead body! Oh my god, people die! We briefly see gory photos of the main character after an accident. His organs are shown inside the Robocop armor. There's one moment of sexuality as the main character is still a human. Kisses his wife. Well, he technically is still a human after he even becomes Robocop because he's just... His body is put into this kind of shell thing. He's more human than Murphy was in the original, that's for sure. But I, 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 I'll, I'll give you that. But anyway, let's get, let's get back to this, this steamy moment. Of sexuality. So there's one moment of sexuality as the main character, still a human, kisses his wife and falls onto a bed where falls on a bed. I'm having a hard time reading this because it's just cracking me up. Falls onto a bed with her. She is shown wearing a bra. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! Oh no! Oh no! Oh Todd! Little Todd! Little Todd's gonna see. A fucking bra run to the hills Todd run run away the bra's gonna eat you 
Come on. <laughs> really? Like, that's something we need to uh, prevent our kids from seeing. So, a, a scene in a PG-13 movie where a guy falls onto a bed with his wife who's wearing a bra. Come on. Language is infrequent, but includes a few uses of shit as well as bitch. I love how bitch is is uncensored, but shit, they, they can't say it. And they can't say a-hole. They, they say a-hole instead of asshole. But you can say ass by itself, but you can't say asshole. It, it's funny, it's like, why is ass censored but in that instance, but it's not when you say it by itself? Uh, Wouldn't... If we're talking about, oh, a horse is, you know, we're talking about an ass, which is a, uh, a you know, a donkey, another word for a donkey. What if, wouldn't it be a, the right terminology to call its butthole, its asshole? I, I'm just, it, something to think about. One use of motherfucker is bleeped out. You didn't need to point that out because it was bleeped out. In one scene, Robocop arrests some drug dealers, users, and then busts a drug lab, drug lab. You don't see any of the drugs. It's just drugs that are there. Nobody's taking any drugs. Oh my god, there's drugs. That automatically is bad for my kid. Overall, it's not nearly as good as the original film, but it's a solid effort. It's not a solid effort. At all. Quality. Three out of five stars. Same rating as the first, as the original film. Very few movie remakes ever live up to the originals, and that's certainly the case with 2014's RoboCop. Whatever taken on its own... Oh, sorry. Uh, RoboCock. H however, taken on its own, the new movie is a fairly, sol is, is fairly solid entertainment. No, it isn't. It's a solid piece of fucking shit. It's a type of hard shit that tears up your fucking asshole as it comes out and plops into the toilet. That's what RoboCop is. It is not a piece of solid entertainment. That's a bunch of fucking bullshit. At least to me anyway. If you like the film to each their own, I don't get it, but this movie's a piece of shit. With some interesting ideas, not really. The ideas that were presented in this were done better in other films before this reboot and in the original film. Strong visual and sound effects, that's not that's not a sign of good quality. It really isn't. The movie costs, what, over $100 million? It should have some solid visual and sound effects. And a great cast. Pfft. Yeah, a great cast. That's a phenomenal cast. Joel, can I get a what, what, Kinnaman and his fucking wannabe wigger impersonation when he's a cop. Uh, he's a stone-faced, constipated joke as, as Robocock. Yeah, he's fucking great. Not. Oh, well, what all, all the other actors? The fucking guy who won't even remember his fucking name and play the drug dealer who just disappears, who will get shot and then gets forgotten about. Michael Keaton, who is delivering one of the most forgettable performances of his career. I mean, it, it looks like he doesn't even give a shit about the role. It's clearly a paycheck role for him, and it shows in his performance. He doesn't have that much to work with either, so I can't entirely blame him for the the bad performance or the bad film that he's in. What? Uh, what? What is the fucking guy uh, who played Freddy? Jackie O'Haley? And he's like, if I only had a brain, and where the fuck? Or he's the Tin Man. Or the fucking guy who played the Black Lewis, Black the the Lewis. The replacement for Lu Officer Lewis, who is now a black guy, for the sake of diversity and diversity alone, and had no, f it was fucking useless. Gary Oldman, who is just a fucking exposition machine. There is not a fucking great cast in this film. If you think this is a great cast, I got a fucking great piece of land to sell you. Or, hey, buy this bridge off of me. Come on. Great cast. Bunch of fucking bullshit. So, it continues here. As an action flick, it's quick, it's intense, and rattling. It's not quick. It's slow-paced. It's 
fucking boring. It's not intense. I've had shits that were more intense than Robocock. Rattling? This film was about as rattling as a fucking baby rattle. Brazilian documentary filmmaker Jose Padilla forgoes the film's original humorous satire and over-the-top violence in favor of a more political view. That isn't very interesting. It isn't as much fun. It is a fucking mistake. Specifically, he plays with Benjamin Franklin's assertion, they who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety, as well as with the theme of corporate greed at the expense of the common people. That's a theme that was played with and done so much better in the original. So, why would you watch Robocop when you can watch Robocop? Why, why go with Robocop when you can watch Robocop instead? Who would pick this shit over Robocop? So, lead actor Joel Kinnaman isn't very expressive or personable, but he's surrounded by strong support. No, he isn't. There's no strong supporting cast here. Including Samuel L. Jackson as, per as a persuasive TV commentator. It's not a strong supporting role. You Are you kidding me, Jeffrey M. Anderson? Really? You think that's a strong support? It's an example of a strong supporting role. Sam Jackson, who opened up the film going, Brrr, ma, 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 ma. Come on. It's fucking ridiculous. Give me a fucking break. It's giving me a fucking headache just reading this shit. Can't believe what the fuck I am seeing. Overall, while it's not entirely necessary, it at least has more heft than the original movie's two sequels. Uh... And it's not, there. there isn't a review of RoboCop 2 or 3 on here. So, how can you really say that, Jeffrey, if there isn't a review of the other two on here? And are you, what are you fucking smoking, man? Seriously, the fuck are you smoking if you think this is more, this... Robocock has more heft than the original movie's two sequels. Robocop 3 had more heft than this fucking did. Easily. The jetpack scene alone was better than anything in this fucking movie. And in Robocop 2 beats the fucking shit out of Robocock. And it definitely has a hell of a lot more heft. Expert reviewers, my fucking ass. And my taint. So let's look up one more. Because I saw this one early, earlier and I couldn't believe what I was fucking seeing. This one is just, this is a perfect example why this site is fucking useless. If you are a parent, don't use this site. Don't use it. Don't use it to determine what your kids should watch and what they shouldn't. Use your own common sense. Not common senses. Common sense in media is common sense. So the Monster Squad, they say it's a goofy monster match with a touch of negative tude. Positive messages, zero. I disagree with that. Teamwork. Friendship. There's plenty of positive messages in the Monster Squad. Family. Violence. Pretty high rating for PG-13 rating movie. Sex. Does it really get a zero? I mean, you gave Robocop, the 1987 film, five dots. But Monster Squad, which has a scene, which is it's clearly implied that they took a picture of this girl while she was taking her top off or something. She was clearly changing... And, you know, Rudy took the photo. I, I would, you know, and they're talking about virgins and stuff. I, I would think you'd at least give it like a couple dots. But what do I know? I'm just a guy who's seen the movie a lot and know the movie front and back. So I know what's in it and what's not. So language. Okay. Consumerism. All right. Drinking drugs and smoking. Okay. So let's go to the parents need to know. Parents need to know. That while most of the movie is good, Scooby-Doo style fun, it also has an undercurrent of intolerance. Oh my god. The, the politically correct bullshit just emanates from this st sentence. And it's just so overpowering. The stench is so strong. It's, it's, it just it makes me want to hurl.
and it makes me want to keel over. In addition to Dracula and the Wolfman, the movie sets up the boogeyman of the day. Gay men, fat people, and girls who want to be included in the boys club. There are no fucking gay men in the monster squad. Where are these gay men? Whoever wrote this, I want to ask her, him or her, who are these gay men in the monster squad? Just because the kids are using the term faggot doesn't really mean that they're talking about gay, specifically talking about gay men who they're not allowing in their club. Come on. <laughs> they do but okay all right i guess they're just assuming because the, the kids are using the word faggot which if you went back into in time and and hang hung around the kids in 1987 they probably did use that word as much as it makes your ears burn it makes your head want to explode they did which is why a lot of kids really like the monster squad because it didn't mess around it was just like, yeah, they talk just like we do. Awesome. It's relatable. So, so here we have, let's continue here. Um, there's also a lot of cartoonist violence that while completely unrealistic is like the scare younger kids. I can see that, although it didn't really scare me. And I watched this film a lot when I was a kid. Sean's parents are also going to marriage counselor and fight loudly where Sean can hear them. Oh my god, there's there's real issues that the kids can't fucking see. The kids can't hear the parents fighting in a movie. That one really got me. I'm like, what? And the gay men thing. What is it with the gay men? Fat people, the girls who want to be included in a boys club. You know... Not every club has to be gender inclusive. You know, sometimes you just want to have a boys club where you can hang out with your best friends. It doesn't always have to be gender inclusive. Girls have the same thing. They would have, girls would have done the same thing back then if they had a girls club. They would have been like, ew, boys, get out of here. <laughs> it's not just the boys who are like, girls, get out of here. It goes both ways. And fat people? Horace is a great example of a fat of a fat kid who other fat kids can look up to because he kicks ass, blows away the creature with a fucking shotgun. My name is Horace. So no, yeah, he gets made fun of, but he stands up for himself. And he has other people like Rudy who stand up for him. So this is a better example of a fat kid, so to speak, getting uh, the, the right kind of treatment in, on film. Because he's not just portrayed as just a fat kid. He actually evolves as a character as the film goes on. So we continue with the oh, parents need to know about part. While Rudy protects Horace from getting bullied, uh, he's also not somebody to look up to. He drinks and smokes. Really? What is this, 19 fucking 30? The 40? Is this the 40s? Or are, we, are we in the fucking... Is this the 50s or some shit? Even in the 50s, you know, kids were smoking and, and he drinks and smokes. D just because he drinks and smokes doesn't mean the other kids are going to drink and smoke just because he does. You know, it's a novel concept, I know, but yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Rudy's a great guy. He stands up for them. He sticks up for for Horace. He sticks up for these other kids. So what he drinks and smokes doesn't fucking matter. As to say that really honestly isn't really an issue. And drinks? I don't remember him ever drinking alcohol in the film. I remember him drinking soda. I remember him spitting the soda out when he saw the what might be a topless picture of one of the girls in the film. But I don't remember him drinking alcohol. Maybe he does. Maybe he had a beer. So? And he smokes. So? The kids will also swear quite a bit and call their teacher and other kids faggot. Yeah, because it's the 80s and you know what? Kids actually talk like that. Because kids had fucking balls. We weren't a bunch of fucking pussies. Now, the review by Heather Boner, Boner, actually is fairly positive, but for some reason 
the quality of the film is two out of five stars. But she said it's a frolicking good time. And then she says it's like Buffy light. It has nothing to do with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That is the worst comparison you can make. Buffy, not a good comparison. It's it's the Goonies meets Monsters. It's the Goonies meets Monsters. The Goonies meets Monsters Squad. It's the Goonies meets Monsters. That's really the best thing to tell kids. It's like Scooby-Doo mixed with a little bit of the Goonies and there's monsters. She talks about the moments with Eugene. I just skipped it because those really aren't not the best moments in the film. Uh, there's much better movies like kick him in, I mean, much better moments in the movie. Blah. God, this fucking website's killing my brain cells. But most of it is your typical Scooby-Doo intrigue. And for avid monster lovers, none of that will matter uh, with the creepy houses, hidden passageways. If you can ignore the fat phobia, homophobia, do these kids have to use the word faggot? Ugh. It's just a word. It's a, it's admittedly kind of an offensive, you know, derogatory word, and I can understand why people are offended by it. But it's a movie, it's a word, and that's all it is. And unless you're gay, why are you offended about it? I mean, that's another thing I, I don't get either. It's like, unless you're the one who it's being derogatory towards, why are you being the one who's all outraged? <laughs> I mean, it maybe she is maybe she is gay if she is then okay more power to her and I can see why she'd be upset but if she's not why are you so pissed why are you so like oh do they have to use that word no they didn't have to but they did and it doesn't make them some kind of monsters because they did either and the no girls allowed attitude at the beginning of the movie the rest is a hoot because, you know, that, that shit didn't actually happen in real life. Oh, wait, it did multiple, many times with many families. And nobody had any issues with it. To be honest, I think a lot of people who have, who run this website, who write reviews, these expert reviewers, I think what they need to go do is they need, they need to go fuck a refrigerator. Because they need to vent something, do something, get something out of their system, whatever it is. And probably fucking a refrigerator would be a better use of their talent and their skills than writing reviews for this shitty, useless, absolutely ridiculous, inane, stupid, insipid website. If you have any common sense, stay the fuck away from this website unless you want to laugh. If you want to laugh, if you just want to look through this website and just be like, oh my God, this is like a, a fucking safe, it's a safe space for movies. It, it's, it's a, a politically correct wonderland for, for, uh, film watchers, for deeply closet, not really necessarily closet is the right word, but you know, for, for Christians and religious people who are just really, really anal about shit and super overprotective about their kids and what they see. This is Mecca for them. But for everyone else who has actual common sense, it's absolutely horrible. It's an atrocious sight. And it's good for a laugh every now and then, but only in small doses because the stupidity is so overpowering, it'll knock your IQ level down a few notches just by reading some of this fucking bullshit. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this mini rant, different kind of style, different kind of format. I just wanted to share you, share with you guys this absolutely unbelievably crazy website. And uh, you can check it out for your own, for yourself. Look up some of your favorite films and see what they have to say about them at your own risk. And as always, thanks for watching and I will see you guys later. See ya.